Papua New Guinea. Its mountains, rivers and forests combine in a display of nature equaling the most spectacular on Earth. PNG, as this nation is affectionately known, boasts some of the last remaining areas on Earth of pristine forest and unspoiled coral reef. But all is not well in this country known as the land of the unexpected. Today, while 77% of PNG is still forested, 40% of that area has been earmarked for prospective logging. Which means scenes like this could soon be replaced with scenes like this. But fortunately, the last word on full-blown logging and mining lies with the traditional owners. However, it's feared that when dealing with the mining and logging companies, they may not get all the information they need to make an informed decision. And that's where the Wildlife Conservation Society comes in, by helping to provide that information to the landowners. Some of us here have been working here for, in this bit of patch of forest for 15 years, doing long-term monitoring. We have studies about hunting, and then we also are doing studies with the wildlife themselves, like the echidnas or cassowaries, uh, megapodes, things that are important food resources for people, and trying to figure out what kind of recommendations can we make that will help them use that wildlife more sustainably. Hunting has always been an integral part of the way of life for the indigenous people of PNG. It's only recently that the increase in human population and subsequent demand has brought the realisation that the wildlife is not in endless supply. Fifty years ago, there were, there were plenty in the bush. They have a saying in Pidgin English, plenty stop long bush. That means there's lots of animals in the bush, but of course now uh, it, it's not the case. Hunting and harvesting, it's about you know, sustainability, not about banning things. So you've got to talk about conservation in terms of how useful animals are and plants and convince people that they need to protect them to use them in the future. Although hunting has the potential to cause major problems for the forest, thanks to data collected by WCS and others, the hunters are becoming increasingly aware that unless they change their hunting traditions and embrace new sustainable management, the natural resources that have sustained their people for centuries will disappear. But the threats to the treasures of PNG are not restricted to the inland mountainous regions. The coral reef here comprises the eastern extremity of the Coral Triangle that stretches from the Philippines, Indonesia to PNG and down to Australia's famous Great Barrier Reef. And just as overhunting is one of the threats to the forest, overfishing is likely to devastate these waters. In fact, Henry Balassi, the administrator of the provincial government says it has already begun. We have two alternatives. Either we exploit our resources, which is, which, will be, which is happening right now. We have that option. The other option is to conserve what we have, that we'd like to go the second option. Fortunately, he has some help, as this is also the aim of Conservation International and the community-based Coastal and Marine Conservation Program. Both initiatives work to put conservation in the hands of the landowners. The people of Milne Bay still own their resources. What we're aiming to do is to work through that system of traditional tenure and ownership and strengthen it and strengthen the people's ability to manage their own resources. The parallels between the threats to the coral reef and the rainforest are both obvious and disturbing. But there is hope. My hope is that, you know, humankind will wake up a little bit and, and if that happens at a time where a place like New Guinea hasn't been totally cleared, this will be an island of, you know, a really a paradise on earth and people will really, you know, admire Papua New Guinea.